Hello everyone, and today we're going to talk about mages in the 3v3 game mode. So we'll be discussing builds, the buff camps, and how to deal with them, the mage role and what you should be doing as a mage, and teammates, how to deal with teammates if you're solo queuing, or just in general how to support them as a mage and what you can do to help them. So let's jump right into builds. Personally, I love lifesteal items on my mages, especially early game. For example, on Anubis or Scylla, I'll take Bancroft's Talon. High damage early game for a high burst damage god. Now, if their god is more passive, like an Isis or an Alquang, maybe I'll start with Polynomicon, Boots, and a couple potions. You want to build your mages fairly offensively, but don't ignore the defensive items. Get one or two. Don't make it your key build, though. Let's talk about the buff camps and how they play a role in 3v3 for mages. Now there's different ways you want to start off with the buff camps. The most common way is you start off at blue. You as the mage will go ahead and get blue most of the time. You will follow your team over into the red buff, drop an AOE or just some type of damage to help out your teammates and then go directly into lane to clear it to give your teammates a little bit more relaxed feel and uh, relieve the pressure off of them. Another way to do it is go directly into red, have your mage start red, and then them go into lane and your team goes blue. Another common way is you start at orange buff, like so. Hide before doing so so the enemy team doesn't see you. You let your ADC, your hunter, or your warrior get orange buff and then go to lane to clear, while the mage or, and the support or the other mage go ahead and clear the other buff camps deciding amongst you which one will get red and blue, obviously. This will allow for the most amount of XP while not being in lane, which is really important because while the other team is in lane trying to farm up, defending against a chalk or a warrior or just whatever, in this case it was a chalk, you're out farming buff camps, getting experience, hitting level four at the same time they do while in lane, but you all of you have a buff giving you the edge over everything. As the game continues, the buff camps are still a crucial part of the game. The reason being is they still offer experience, gold, and the buff camp. The red camp is the most powerful one and it will be the most fought over. The reason being it will offer the most amount of damage as well as it is the closest one to the middle of the lane where most of the action is happening. Keep an eye on those timers. You're going to want to get them as soon as they're up. And most of the time, if you're in a group of three people, you're going to want to rotate between all three camps, maximize the experience you're getting from lane, from the camps, and the buffs that you're having. If you can coordinate with your team to go ahead and get the other side red buff, denying your opponents the red buff and the XP, that's even better. I hope you guys do that. It's really important. One little tip is that right after you get the red buff and a t the enemy team realizes it, they're going to try and gank you. So just be careful. Now the mage role in 3v3 is probably one of the most important roles that you can actually play. The reason being is they will often line up kills, secure kills, and lead their team to victory. One of the main reasons that they're so popular in 3v3 is their lane clear. It's one lane, so the faster you can take out those little creeps and get to the enemy tower and push the enemy into the tower, the better. And the more pressure you're going to remove from your allies so they can focus on the enemy players. Now, as well as all the lane clear, they have insane damage. They can take anyone down insanely fast, which is really important. A kill is everything in 3v3, but that damage comes with a consequence. You are incredibly squishy. You take a lot of damage, and if you're caught out at the wrong moment, you're going to be taken down, which is just not a good thing whatsoever. This is why gods with lots of crowd control survivability or just plain right high burst damage are really favored in 3v3 gods like anubis isis al kwong scylla changa those are just a couple off the top of my head that i prefer playing and if you utilize them to the full potential they can do a lot but once again you're squishy don't get greedy don't chase the kill like i just did you'll get punished you only have two people supporting you which brings me to another role in the mage class is supporting. Isis is a prime example of this. She can use her stuns, her silences to peel for her teammates. Really important part of 3v3 is communication and team play. Make sure you're communicating with your teammates and allowing them to know where you are at all times. 
Now, team plays and team fights are the most important part in 3v3. You need to be peeling for your teammates with silences and stuns and whatever you can to help them survive. This is crucial. I cannot stress this enough because if you support them, they're going to support you and you need them to. They'll help you get out of a sticky situation, allowing your team to go on to victory. So let's recap a little bit. Mages, you should be, first of all, building offensively. For the most part, do not totally deny any defensive items. It's a bad idea. Secondly, use the buff camps to your advantage. They are highly important in 3v3, especially as a mage. And last of all, support your teammates. This is insanely important. Help your teammates out. Be gracious in victory and be polite when playing. I can't stress this enough. And most of all, just have a good time playing 3v3. It's a great game mode. It is rising in popularity. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and please subscribe.